Hey, well, it's me, the Lucky Date Reviewer, and this is probably going to be my first Ruby discussion video, honestly. I don't know how well this is going to go, but I wanted to actually talk about this as late, well, yesterday, around this time, me and a guy on a different, on a different video had started having a discussion, and he brought up Ilya, and how... What they did with her was considered good. And while maybe for him, yeah, that could be good. But some of the, the, um, some of the, hold on, let me pull this up. But some of the, like, quotes and some of the problems some fans had, they seemed off. Like, uh, give me a second, I'll show you exactly what I mean. I can just pull up the video and just hopefully mute it real quick. Okay, mute. Okay, there we go. Mute. And this. Okay, on new background. Nope, that's not it. On and here we go. All right. This comment right here, how people were getting, were giving Miles and Carrie flack for quote unquote killing off the first confirmed character for drama and B for, for to make ho to be homophobic for making a villainous character gay. Apparently, that's a problem some fans have, and I'll be completely honest. That was not my problem with Ilya. Don't get me wrong; I, she has problems, but that wasn't one of them. Wasn't well, in fact I was worried about whether she was LGBT or whatever. I was upset. Like I think a lot of people can agree, it was forced, and I can understand why they forced it in and why it clearly has been sort of dissolved with Volume Six and the one time we've seen her. With that, of course, being that back when Volume Five was going on. The SJW sort of shenanigans were at an all-time high, and they probably wanted to avoid any all publicity, publicity, blah, publicity, blah, 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 blah. Any criticism and controversy with having Ilya being not being LGBT. But here's something I've also realized: there is a direct correlation between her and Adam, and their character, and their characters being liked to disliked, and there's a pattern. Back when Volume 4, we didn't know much about her. She did one thing. She posed a, a serious threat. Considering she was able to more or less wound son. And basically was not hesitant on hurting her fellow Faunus. Adam! Karen, we did not know, but she, he was shown within the black trailer to be very merc... Um... Mer mer blah. Let me rephrase that. Shown in the black trailer to be very not, to not have, God, I can't phrase my word, to be not really merciful to humans. To willingly just kill humans for the sake of everything they've done. And this, this type would go on to volume 5. And go into, like, uh, like with Elliot, it would go up to the point where they, they ambush, um, they would ambush Blake. But same with that, he would he would just he didn't come back till volume two, and then he had the flashback with volume three. But then that one moment, that one moment between the two characters, that sort of unanimously gave had turned the fans against them, was the moment they became obsessed with Blake. Think about it, Adam in volume up to that point. Up to that point where he, he confronted Blake at the school and started, you know, doing all his stuff. Being this, this weird boyfriend thing. A lot of people were alright with him. No, Not a lot of people had problems with him. Not a lot of people, you know, they didn't agree with him, but they also didn't disagree. Maybe that's because he didn't have a lot of character time at that point, but again... They weren't really given a reason to hate, to, like, dislike Adam as a character. 
And they could have kept this going with Adam simply, you know, being the guy that is opposing humanity for what they've done to the Faunus and how they se- they more or less separated them. And same thing with Ilya. You could consider everything she was doing to be justified considering the Belladonna's are now trying to stop and destroy the Black Fang's plan and more or less destroy the one hope at the Fang is having equal rights to even possibly having being the ones in control, allowing them to get vengeance on humanity. But the one moment that tips this off is the fact that both of them become obsessed with Blake, and that more or less becomes the driving force of their characters. And it was that, and again, you can tell at both parts, this was ultimately the moment that caused both characters to lose popularity. Ilya had the fortunately, for the fortunate of having being able to, you know, have her character have this problem, and then with Volume Six, they sort of pushed it off to the side, so that way, damage, more damage cannot be done. In a sense, and plus, it seems Ilya and Blake are friends. They're friends. They're nothing more, nothing less. That that whole that whole crush thing is in the past. It seems they moved on. That's and that's that's good. That's good, because that means you can actually work with Ilya and and make her an actual character that's not dependent on someone. Adam, on the other hand, oh god, Adam is just so messed up. And it would have been easy for them to simply, with the Adam trailer, give him one last display before they send him off for a while. More or less have him meditate on his failures. Still realizing that chasing Blake isn't going to fix the world and how he needs to stop it and curb his own desires for Blake with with desires of his people, with, with the Faunus. But instead, we go off of Volume 6 with Adam's failures to him continually chasing Blake. And it's just... Why? Why... Why at this point? Like... Adam is not considered a threat. You completely and utterly broken him during Volume 5. And, and again, I believe, if uh, this is like, again, people have been predicting this is probably Adam's final volume. And if this is Adam's final volume, there's no way they're going to make him a redeemable character. They're not. They've destroyed Adam as a character. He doesn't, he's not going to be able to get the Ilya treatment at this point. Ilya got off lucky. Again, this doesn't have to be deal with them being gay or straight. I don't care. But the fact that Blake is more or less the, was more or less their primary motivation was ultimately the reason why I, ca- I came to hate both of them. And I was okay with both of them at start. I was hyped for him at, with the review of him being being a primary threat in Volume Three. I was hyped to see what he did. But when it came to time to show his stuff. That was sort of when my brain started te- started telling, st- started saying like, this something's wrong, something's off. And again, you could tell, the fact that in Cinder's flashback, Adam did not want to follow Blake. She did, he didn't want to even care about her. She he wanted to focus on what's going on in front of him, to literally him being obsessed with her. You could tell where Monty's writing for Adam ended. And where Miles and Carrie's writing for Adam started. Because that's been the dra- main driving point from Adam since Volume 3. And we all know what happened with Volume 3. Like. It took me a long time to only realize why I dislike or like ha- don't like Volume 3 as much as I do Volume 2 or 1 or even 4. I'm not including Volume 5 because Volume 5 is worse than Volume 3. I'm sorry. But I've only realized it's just there was so many things wrong with Volume Three, with how things were more or less being flipped over the, on their heads because of the whole change. Again, 
brain, like, the brain will do amazing things, basically, sort of. They, it will do amazing things. And I, it's only now do I help me realize the pro, po, all the problems with them in Volume 3. And why that's probably, whenever I go to review the other volumes, it's going to be my first. Volume 3 is going to be my first, because I've... I'm firmly believing that it was with Volume 3 where things started to go south with Ruby. Volume 4 was nice. Volume 4 was nice. But then came Volume 5. And some start with Volume 6 still don't sit with me. One which we'll get, get into this weekend. Once the vo Episode 5 for, for everyone is released. I plan for a new discussion, and why this is likely also going to be her final volume as well. Despite what this, the guy and I argue about, because that was what we primarily argue about, was back when not at, um, whether or not Neil was going to die in Volume 6. And I have some evidence pointing out the fact that that's likely where they're going with Volume, with, um... With Neo, that's sort of where they're going. Again, I'm not gonna spoil it. I'll do. I'll likely do the, the Neo discussion after I do my Volume Five review. Or not not Volume Five. My Episode Five review. So yeah, be on the lookout for that. But I just want to do this video on on how their obsession with Blake. Sort of destroy, sort of damage their characters, and why? Hopefully, with Adam and with Ilya, Miles and Carrie can learn to not have characters that are literally dependent on on a certain on a character, because that's not good characters. That's not good character. That's that's literally that's on that's, not, well, that's not, not only that's not, is that not a good character. That's not even a good villain motivation. Again, if you had Adam simply attacking and trying to kill Blake for the fact that she turned her back on her on her fellow White Fangs, that she was willing to ban the jump ship the moment to jump ship ship the at the cost simply because she didn't like it, I would understand that. Same with Ilya. I would understand why she wants the Belladonna pit to pay pay because they abandoned the, the, the blah. Excuse me. Hold on. Let me just take a drink real quick. Anyways, I can see why Ellie wanted to kill the other Belladonnas, why she was willing to go through with Adam's plan. Because they too betrayed the code. They literally walked out. Like, they stepped down, but I'm sure there was some stuff going on. I'm sure a lot of them would have been okay with Gira, Gira you know, keeping the mantle by adjusting to their ideals. But ultimately, he didn't. He just, he retired. Basically. And now he's trying to stop the right thing. Which is a major, you know, you're betraying, you're, you're betraying the cause you once served. I don't think anyone would be okay with that and would probably try to do get revenge. But again, it was with the the Blake thing without me caused me to dislike both their characters, not because they, not because Illy went gay, but because of the fact that it was literally the entire point of her vengeance. It was. It wasn't clever. It wasn't. Cheap, it wasn't good. Good. It was just boring. And I hopefully, hopefully, when Miles and Carrie have learned this, when they finally kill off Adam, because we know it's happening. It's. We know it's coming. You can only have a character be this annoying for so long before you even the writers get tired of writing for them and they only get rid of them. But I hope that with volume. With Volume 7, whenever they introduce new villains, they, they try and make it so they're not just one-dimensional and dependent on a certain character. They actually have them, their own philosophies, their own reasoning for doing things. Again, I'm, I disagree with what the guy said earlier about how it's, how people are giving him flack, because I don't know how many people actually did that. 
I mean, the SJW probably did that. They didn't want, they didn't want the um Ilya to be gay, but be also be you know all this stuff. I, Cause, but I don't know how many. I don't think any other viewer really had that problem. At least I don't think. Again, I'm I'm good to be like changed. I'm 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 okay with being like pointed out wrong how some maybe a major like a big time Ruby reviewer actually complained about this and pointed this out. I'll be like, okay, I guess I guess someone did change I guess some people did care. But those sayings they feel and sound like the stuff the SJW would sprout because you can have gay characters be villainous. You can have gay characters be villains. We, like, the fact that you're trying to say, oh, you can't have gay characters be villains, that's, that's, that's insulting. Is it? Or are you insulting at them at the fact that gay, that gay people can't be evil? Like, when I'm not saying they can't, they are, I'm just saying you're, not, you're trying to deny the possibility of them being evil. Therefore, you're sort of putting them on a higher pedestal. You're cherry picking. You are trying to basically it's it's just, again. I'm simply trying to state the fact that I want equal opportunities and the fact that hey, I my complaint wasn't the fact that she was a gay villain. My complaint was the fact that her character motivation revolved around Blake. Same with Adam. You can be straight, gay, or even want to freak a helicopter, freak a hel uh, freak a he uh, bang a helicopter. I don't care. But if your character motivation is very thin, sort of like how Hazel's character development was very thin and his motivations was very thin, then you're not going to receive sympathy from me. Because, again, the fact that you had a crush on someone but they never they never noticed you, or the fact that your girlfriend just dumped you and abandoned the cause that you are a part of, does not give you the rights to want to murder them. I'm just saying, that's not a good character motivation for one to cause them harm. That's not a good villain motivation. That's a very stale and boring one. But I digress. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and I hope you guys enjoyed this discussion. I hope, again, tell me more. Tell me if you want more of these discussions. Because again, I'm willing to give them. I'm willing to throw my hat in the ring. I'm willing to do it. So yeah, and it's just something to do whenever fate's, you know, on a low tide, I guess you could say. Give me something to do besides all fate stuff. But yeah, uh, thank you guys for watching, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.